Hi. Probably you have heard the term transitions before, as it is widely used in sustainability research and policy. In this video, I would like to explain what it means and how transitions come about. The term transitions is derived from demographic studies and was used to describe the major changes in population over time. Combinations of increasing mortality and decreasing birth rates led to a transition in population growth patterns and societies as a whole. Here's a common definition of a transition in sustainability studies. The whole of transformation processes in which societies change in a fundamental way over a time span of one generation or more. We are not talking incremental or marginal change, but fundamental changes in societies. And they take time. Examples of past transitions are the Industrial Revolution in the uh, 19th century Europe, the change from transport by transport by mail coaches to train systems in the USA, or the nationwide rollout of a piped gas network in the Netherlands after the discovery of natural gas reserves in the, in the 1960s. How do transitions come about? Well, a whole lot of literature is devoted to answering this question. I will present a widely used model first and after that some examples of ex and ap applications. This video may help you to use and apply the transition model to any given urban challenge. Let me start with Frank Hill's elaborate figure on transitions. The essential part of this figure, and in the transition, is the change of a socio-technical regime. A regime comprises the whole set of current markets, industries, supply chains, policies, technologies, <coughs> as, well, <coughs> as well as people's practices habits and routines in a certain sector of society. For energy, that would mean our current fossil fuel-based system of electricity grids, our domestic energy practices, the energy utilities and markets, and the rules and regulations around production and consumption of energy. An envisioned sustainable energy regime would require a major shift towards a fundamentally different regime, based on renewable resources, new technologies, and altered energy practices. This set of changes is depicted as a bundle of arrows in the heart of the figure, running from the current regime on the left side to the new regime on the right. Now, if this depicts a transition, how does it come about? Here we add the concept of niche development. According to this model, a transition is fueled by innovations that come from outside the current regime and that ori originate in niches. These innovations may disturb one or more dimensions of the regime. It is presented in the model as the disturbance of arrows midfield. So transitions are believed to be initiated in so-called niches, bottom left in the graph. These are protected spaces in which multiple actors try out and learn about novelties. Urban living labs are a good examples of such niche developments. Protection is needed because whatever happens in the niches, it's not aligned with the current regime and cannot easily benefit from economies of scale. Subsidies for innovation, tax exemptions, exemptions of rules and regulations, all of these may be forms of protections of a niche. Many of such projects fail, as you can observe in all the arrows not making it. But some may scale up, mature and manage to make a crack in the current regime. It is through these cracks and the adoption of novelties that eventually the regime will change into a new regime. Next to the level of niches and regimes, there is a third level, so-called socio-technical landscape. This is another word for the wider context of all regimes together. Think of world economy, the geopolitical landscape, global warming. Large-scale factors from the landscape level may put pressure on the current regimes and thereby open up the regime for niche innovations to enter from below. Lastly, it's worth mentioning that niche level change may be seen as a bottom-up process, but sometimes changes come directly from the regime level or even landscape level. Natural disasters may speed up innovations on the niche level. Moreover, current regime actors may aspire to a transition and help to get niche innovations off the ground. After all, many urban living labs are initiated by consortia of regime stakeholders. These developments are the dotted arrows on the left side of the figure. Well, this picture 
might help you in understanding the relations between the three levels of niche, regime and landscape. You can see the transition of a regime as a change in the course of a river. Rivers are able to change a landscape, but only in a very long run. River flows may be adjusted in a shorter time span by building groins to adjust the flow or dams to radically change the flow. The regimes being the river, it is guided and it's curving its way through the landscape. Niche projects are the measures to adjust or redirect the river flow. So much for the theory. I hope that this gives you some insight into transitions. And every time the concept pops, pops up, you may question what type of transition we are talking of and how they come about. The theory has been applied to sustainable urban developments like energy, water, housing, transport, food and circularity. It helps urban stakeholders in articulating the regime we want in the long run and linking it to innovation and experimentation we need to organize today.